All right. Hey, welcome to Discovery Church. Let me look into that camera right there and welcome everyone who's joining us online in our courtyard outdoor in Discovery Northwest campus. Come on, guys, wherever you're at, give God some praise. You excited to be in God's presence today? Amen. We're in part four of this series called Toxic, Toxic. And in this series, we've been detoxing intentionally every week based upon how God created us. And so we talked about in week one, if you miss any of these, you got to catch up online. In week one, we, we, we discovered for some of us for the very first time that God actually created you triune. You may have heard of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but a lot of people don't understand that God actually created us in his image triune with a spirit, a soul, and a body. This creates, those three components create the whole self the Bible calls it, okay? So what we've been doing is studying each one of those parts of self that God created that are absolutely important and and identifying toxins that exist in in the spirit, the soul, and the body in in our habit life, and then spending that week with intentional focus of detoxing, separating ourselves and getting clean, man. And I'm hearing so many great testimonies from this. By the way, if you have a hurt or habit or a hang up, if you have some of those habits that are affecting you, that are toxic, that Pastor Sean did an amazing job with preaching last week, then, then please check out Thursday nights here at the Southwest Campus. Dream Center has it on Sunday night, our, our Celebrate Recovery Ministry. This is a powerful ministry for those that are dealing with those toxic habits that are destroying your body and it doesn't stay there does it it affects your soul and your spirit so if you have any of that there's a safe place for you that you can get healing you can find freedom at cer on thursday night at this campus at 6 30 or sunday nights at the dream center campus today we're going to talk in the last installment of this series a very important easily overlooked area that some of us are getting poisoned by our relationships we're going to talk about toxic relationships. There's some people like there's some people around you that are infecting and affecting you, pulling you the wrong way. Here's the truth, you guys need to understand, everyone can't go where God is taking you. And if you get the wrong people out of your life, God will bring the right people into your life. For some of you, the only thing that's holding you back is your inner circle. And if you don't show them the door, they're going to destroy your destiny. Okay, this is, this is, I think, so pivotal for some of you to get, to catch. Like, some of you, it's the people that are closest to you even. They might be with you, but they're not for you. Okay, so I'm going to help you out today, too. How do you identify toxic people, toxic relations? How do I deal with them? And what does a relationship detox look like? What is, what is healthy relationships in God's word? How does he want me to be healthy in my relationship life? What does that look like for us? Let me show you in the scripture uh, what a toxic person looks like in the example of King Saul. Could have used a lot of different examples with King Saul, but let me use 1 Samuel chapter 18. This part of 1 Samuel picks up in chapter 18 right after David defeats Goliath. He gets insta-famous, immediately pedestal, man. Everyone knows this guy's name. David was a nobody after Goliath. He's, an, he's somebody. Everybody knows. Everybody's buying his sneakers and stuff now and stuff, you guys. So he's, everyone's following him on Instagram. He's, this guy's famous, all right? So 1 Samuel chapter 18 picks up right after this battle. And it says, after David had finished talking with King Saul, Jonathan became, and Jonathan is the son of King Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day, Saul kept David, look what it says, Saul kept David with him and did not let him return home to his family. Here's a sign of a toxic person in our life. They isolate us from relationships, especially healthy relationships. Okay, this is what King Saul was doing, isolating him for selfish, self-gain reasons. Whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was successful. I need to keep that around. He's helping me out. So Saul gave him a high rank in the army. This pleased all the troops and Saul's officers very well. When the men were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, with joyful songs 
and with tim- timbrels and lyres, just all these musical instruments. L- listen to what they were singing, though. This is interesting. They danced and sang, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands. That's kind of messed up, if you ask me. Why, why would you compare them like that? So this Saul, Saul something like in, in that... He, he got him angry, man. It upset him, that compare. That refrain displeased him greatly, and here's what he said. They've credited David with tens of thousands, but me with only thousands? What more can he get but the kingdom? Now, granted, these, these ladies should not have been coming out singing comparison like that. You better, this, look, you got to be careful of, like, you comparing, like, comparing, comparing your kids, comparing your relationships, uh, Comparing ministries, church, comparing your pastors and stuff like that. What you're doing is you're depositing toxic seeds. Stop it, okay? Stop it. This got into Saul, and, and he, got, he has this, like, this poverty mindset, this scarcity mindset. The scarcity mindset is a mindset of limitation based on fear that believes there's not enough to go around, so I need it all myself. There's not enough. If they're praising him, then they're going to not like me. If he's getting attention, then I'm going to lose attention. If he's being successful, then I can't be successful. This is a, 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 a poverty, diminished limitation, limited mindset that King Saul has. And from that time on, he kept a close eye on David. The next day, an evil spirit of God. Now, that doesn't mean it actually came from God. It means God allowed it. Here's, here's what happened. Because of this jealousy, this anger, this comparison... God inside of him, this manipulation, him manipulating him, David for his own gain, isolating him and trying to control his life for his own purposes, this stuff, listen to me, it attracted an evil spirit into his life, okay? So this evil spirit was attracted to what the decisions and choices that he was making that were manipulative, it came forcefully on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre, and as he usually did, Saul had a spear in his hand, and he was so so tormented and toxic, this King Saul. He hurled it. He, he tried to pin him. I'll pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice. Saul was afraid of David. Here we see King Saul. And all throughout the story, if I had time to dive in, but I want to kind of get into some stuff, I would show you how King Saul was so toxic and the behaviors and traits that he had. Here's, here's what I want you to see, though. David identified the toxic behavior. He discerned and identified this is an unsafe person in my life. And he fled from King Saul. He, he, he distanced himself from the toxic relationship. Even when King Saul wanted to restore a relationship, there was a time where King Saul was like, oh, I'm sorry, you're so much more righteous than I am. Uh, I, so forgive me, David. David did not restore a relationship with King Saul. David kept the distance and said, Trust, okay, trust is earned, though. And, and, and slowly he went back to his toxic behavior. And I want you to notice the difference here. Jonathan, Jonathan is, is Saul's son, and he responded very differently than King David. Jonathan does not distance himself from, from King Saul's behavior. Probably for a few reasons. One, he's his kid, okay? His dad's king. But I think sometimes we can see the toxic behavior and traits in somebody, but they're pointed. The arrows and spears are going out somebody else, and we think, well, I'm fine. Well, I'm fine. They won't do that to me. And and Jonathan made a huge, it would cost him his life. Jonathan died alongside his toxic father because he did not distance himself from a toxic parent. We want to talk about that. Yeah, there's, there's some, some healthy ways that you can actually handle even, even parental, familial relationships for your own health and your own calling. Am I getting too deep on you guys? Are all with me okay? Okay. There's a lot of toxic behaviors at King Saul. We kind of called out a few things. But let me give you not your notes. When I don't preach for one Sunday, I come back with so much more notes. Okay. okay. So let me give you seven of the top toxic Common, common toxic behaviors that, listen, you need to be able to discern these things. You got to be able to discern. And I'm not giving you these so that you, can, so that you can abuse people, label people, and misuse it, okay? So you can just call people these names. I'm not giving to you as ammunition to be used against the people in your life, okay? Toxic in and of itself is an overused term. Sometimes we, we just overuse that term, toxic, you know, those 
the, the toxic masculinity. Maybe you just got hurt by a man and don't know what masculinity even is, okay? So, or, or that organization is toxic. I'm a toxic organization. Well, maybe they just wanted you to show up on time and do your job, okay? <laughs> oh, my gosh. They wanted, to make you, <laughs> they wanted to make you make a positive impact on the organization. How dare they? How dare they want you to, like, do something positive? Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm getting off. Of, so let me give you seven of the most common that you need to be able to discern for yourself. And I would even say, let's allow this to be a mirror so that any toxins inside of us that we're dragging into relationships, okay? Here it is. Number one is the criticizer. You all know them, right? They're always finding fault with something, with someone. They're quick to criticize, quick to judge. They're overly negative and pessimistic. They make other people feel bad about themselves, right? These criticizers, just overly critical. Number two is the victim. Now, the victim type, you know, they're, they're always complaining. They're always playing the victim card. Uh, they're quick to blame other people for their problems, but then they never take any ownership for any of the mistakes in their life. Never own any ownership or responsibility. They refuse to take it. They're always the victim. That's a toxic person. Number three is the control freak. The control, those people want to control everything and everyone around them. They may be manipulating or domineering, or they may use coercion or intimidation tactics, like they'll threaten you and, 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 and kind of rise up on you, puff out their chests on you. These, these, these are people that are control freaks, and it's toxic. Number four is the narcissist. The narcissist is a, a self-absorbed person often is entitled. They believe they deserve it. They lack empathy for other people. They're very image conscious. It's more about them and their image. So they disregards people's needs and feelings. They're very narcissistic and selfish. Number five is the drama queen. And don't forget the drama kings up in this place. Come on. They thrive on drama and chaos. They thrive on it, man. But not only that, they, they create unnecessary crisis. They create unnecessary chaos in order to control the situation, the narrative, or, or, or people, or to get attention on themselves, okay? The drama queens and the drama kings. Number six is the gossip. A lot of these are normalized in our culture, but it should not be normalized in the kingdom of God. Okay, gossip is something that's very normal in our culture. We just spread rumors and talk about people behind their backs. Look, that's, that may be normal. It may, a lot of this stuff, you guys, we, we have with inside of us because it was taught to us somewhere along the way. Maybe your parents did this. Maybe was someone around you did this, and you picked up on some toxic traits, but you need to know that is not healthy. Talking about people when they're not around is evil. It is toxic, okay? And you're infecting people with that, and some of you are being infected by it. Number seven is the jealous competitor. Now, it's okay to be competitive, all right, but, but not, not to the point where you're, you're, you're jealous and, and you try to undermine and sabotage somebody else, sabotage their success, sabotage their happiness, only to satisfy your own sense of superiority. That is toxic. Okay, so you look at these lists, you look at King Saul, and you're like, yeah, I know, man, I got some toxic people, maybe some toxic relationships in my life. What do I do with a toxic person? What do I do with a toxic relationship? Write this down. The first thing you need to do is this. You need to realize you cannot please everybody. It is not your job to please everybody. You cannot please everybody. And if you try, you're going to make yourself go crazy. You can't. Listen, the, the people pleasing is a disease. It'll make you sick. It'll turn you into a counterfeit version of yourself. It's not healthy. It's not loving. It's not life-giving. And it's preventing some of you from living the full life that God wants you to live. You know what people, people pleasing is? People pleasing is rooted in fear. It's the fear of rejection, the fear of failure, the fear of not being enough. We're afraid of what other people will say and think about us. And because of that, it, we, we end up abandoning self. It's a form of self-abandonment. Here's what we do. We sacrifice our own needs and desires to gain approval and acceptance from somebody else. Here's the problem with that. When you do that, you're not doing it to God then. So what we, what we should be doing is sacrificing our needs and our desires for the glory of God and for his kingdom. But when you live fear 
of people and fear of failure and fear of rejection, you end up sacrificing what you know is right and good. You sacrifice your desires just to please somebody else. And some of you have toxic people in your life only because you're allowing them in your life. You're allowing it. John chapter 5, verse 30, Jesus says this, by myself, I can do nothing. Look what he says. In his human nature, he's saying, look, my human nature, by myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is judged. For I seek not to please myself, but look at this, but him who sent me. This is who I'm here to please. I can't please everybody, and I'm not going to try to please everybody. And it's okay if somebody doesn't like me. Some of you need to receive that. It's okay if they don't like you. Who doesn't like me? Who do, did you hear something? Who, do, who don't like me? Give me the name. Give me the name, what I do, what I do. Some of you, you know what? If that's triggered inside of you, you're like, who doesn't? If, if that's what happens inside of you, I'm telling you, you got the wrong spirit inside of you. You got a fear. You got a people-pleasing spirit inside of you. And it's going to cause you to, to sacrifice the wrong things. It's going to cause you to invite the wrong people into your circle. And it's going to destroy your destiny. Okay? So you got to realize, realize, you can't please everybody. And then number two, you got to learn how to recognize these toxic behaviors, to discern it, to recognize it. Not everybody gets same access to your life. Henry Cloud, he wrote a book called Safe People. Safe People. You ought to read it. It's a great book. The subtitle is How to Find Relationships That Are Good for You and Avoid Those That Aren't. I love that. Some of y'all need that book, okay? He uses a biblical metaphor, though, to, defri- to describe the different types of people, and there's four. He says there's four different types of people in your life, and you need to be able to discern what type of person they are to understand what kind of access they have, okay? So here's what he says. He, he says healthy relationships are like a flock of sheep. That's what he says. So, so we're all healthy relationships. You're sheep together. We wander together. We, we play together. We we we. We dance and play and frolic together. We're doing it together. We go as a herd. We're going together. How the relationships like a sheep, but all sheep need a shepherd. All sheep need shepherds. They need a good shepherd, though. And those come in the form of like your pastors or your leaders or even like your parents. Or They come in the form of your aunts and uncles, some bosses in your life, some different people like that. They're, they act as good shepherds in our life. They guide and protect the sheep. Good shepherds are trustworthy. They're caring, and they're committed to the well-being of the sheep. But not everyone in our lives is a good shepherd. And some people are occupying roles, spaces, and titles in our life that they should be a good shepherd, but they are not a good shepherd. They are a hired hand. And there's a big difference between the shepherd and a hired hand. Hired hands are only interested in their own gain. And when the going gets tough, they'll abandon the flock. When robbers come and thieves come, a shepherd, the good shepherd, defends the flock. But the hired hand runs because he's interested in self-preservation and self-gain. Okay? And so there are some, some people in your life that occupy some of those spaces that I just listed right now, but they're truly not good shepherds. They, they will prove themselves over time. They may seem helpful and supportive at first, but ultimately you're going to see they're untrustworthy and unreliable. And you need to understand that. There are some people that are not good shepherds occupying shepherd roles. They're just hired hands. Okay? And lastly, there are wolves in this valley called life. There are wolves in this valley. People who are actively wanting to harm, destroy, discredit, devalue. And they may not be doing it for everybody, but to you, they're a wolf. And you just need to identify that. You need to be able to discern where the wolves are. You know what, what wolves, here's how you can know how to spot a wolf. A wolf always tries to isolate you from the flock, okay? The wolf uh, controls and coerces. The wolf has outbursts of anger and aggression, which, by the way, just because you have an occasional outburst or something doesn't make you a toxic person, okay? Doesn't make you toxic, all right? But, but you need to check this out. Listen, the wolf, listen, when they tell the story, the shepherd is always the enemy, when you listen to the wolf too much, it's every good shepherd in your life, every parent, every, every mentor, every coach, the pastor, the leader, every, it's, it's they are, they're isolating you from the, from the good shepherds in your life. You better be careful. The wolves, you need to understand how to discern them. Proverbs chapter 4, 23 says, above all else, guard your heart. 
You got to guard your life. You got to understand some people can't come in this close. You can't touch, you can't get cl- too close to my heart because everything flows from it. Listen, you cannot make a wolf a sheep. And you cannot make a hired hand a good shepherd. You can't change toxic people, but you can change how much power they have over you. Write it down like this. Stop trying to change them and change the nature of your relationship with them. The only way to deal with toxic people is to recognize their behavior and stop engaging with them. A lot of times we try to change. We try to, they're like projects to us. We think we can change them. We'll change, I could change them. And, and it, oftentimes it's because they don't, they're not meeting your expectations or your standards or something like that. I promise you, listen, if you continue to try to change people, all those relationships, what has it gotten you? You know what I mean? They all end in frustration and resentment. When you stop trying to change people and just change the nature of that relationship, a lot of these people, they, you can actually thrive and you can let them thrive and you thrive if, they, if you just kind of, if you just change the nature of that relationship instead of trying to change them. Proverbs 9 verse 8 tells us this wisdom. I love the message paraphrase version of this. He says, if you reason with an arrogant cynic, you're going to get slapped in the face. Come on, everyone ever, you don't ever try to reason with a toxic person. It, <laughs> no, it's, it, it's harmful. It's harmful for you. He says, you confront bad behavior and get kicked in the shins. So don't waste your time on a scoffer. All you're going to get for your pains is more abuse. Just because, no, 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 but I keep it real. I got to tell people, no, 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 not everybody needs your real. Not everybody does. And if you just keep saying everything that pops into your head, maybe you are the toxic person. I'm, man, I'm, I'm, that was too harsh, huh? I'm sorry. I love you. I love you. But he says this, but if you correct those who care about life, that's different. They'll love you for it. Yeah, so some people can handle that level. And, and, and some people can, cannot. Some people can handle that, that, that level of connection and feedback. And some of you just need to understand, some people can't. There's, there's layers of, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. You're around the wrong people. We've got some relationships that are affecting us and we're not realizing. I'm praying God reveals to you, gives you revelation today. He says, come back to your senses. I love that. You need to wake up, man. You can't control how toxic people treat you, but you can control how much access they have to you. Which is why one of the most important things that you can do when dealing with a toxic person, write this down, is set clear boundaries. Not walls. Some of you have, I said boundaries. Some of you have put up walls because you've been hurt, and now nobody can really know you, the real you, and have access to your heart, and that's not healthy either. I'm not talking about walls that keep people out. I'm talking about boundaries that only let the right people in. Okay, clear boundaries. And I have found when you start setting boundaries, when you do this, you start setting boundaries, it's going to offend some people. But what I found is that healthy boundaries are only hurtful to unhealthy people. Come on, are you hearing me, you guys? So, so some people are going to get hurt by your healthy boundaries. That's a bad sign. That's a sign you did the right thing. Sometimes, sometimes okay, because... I know a lot of people, I'm a pastor, you guys, I know thousands of people and stuff, and I'm meeting people, connecting with people. I mean, I, have, I try to have like an open door, too, to where like I go out to coffee and lunch with new people as the Holy Spirit leads me, but, but I also have to protect my time. And so, and so let me give you just like, I'll be connecting with people. 95% of the time when I'm connecting with them, I'm like, dude, we need to connect. Give my, my assistant, you know, your number, we, we connect. 95% of the time, it's cool. It's cool. They're like, yeah, let's go. And they give it. 5% of the time, they're like, I want your number. What do you mean your assistant number? Pastor, I want your number. I'm like, you ain't never getting my number. <laughs> did that hurt some of you? Did that hurt your feelings? And I did that on purpose because, here, listen, if that was hurtful to you, then you're unhealthy. Healthy boundaries are only hurtful to unhealthy people. Let me, I, want you, I want to give you a few questions to ask yourself. Um, to really to set some clear boundaries. These aren't in your notes, but three questions. I want you to be honest in asking yourself these three questions if you're going to get to this place where you get healthy boundaries. Number one, who am I around? I want you to ask yourself that. Like, who am I, who am I around? Like, who am I spending time with? Who, who am I doing life with? Who, who has access? Who am I hanging out with? Who am I, you know, playing the game with? Who am I, who am I doing, working with? Who am I going to lunch with? Who am I, who am I, who am I around, okay? 
And then, and then secondly, ask yourself this, what are they doing to me? What are they doing to my attitude? What are they doing to my habits? What are they, in, in that, what are they doing to my, my re- other relationships? What are they doing to my, to my future, my calling, my destiny? What are they doing to, what are they doing to me? What, what, what's happening from this, from this relationship, okay? And then number three, ask yourself, honestly, is that okay? Is, is that okay that they, I'm allowing this? And this is going to help you set some clear boundaries of who needs to have what kind of access. Proverbs chapter 27 says it like this. Wise people see trouble coming and get out of its way. But fools go straight to the trouble and suffer for it. Some of you, you see it. You know that they're toxic and you still allow them access to your life. We need to set up. When you set boundaries, you're not only protecting yourself, you're teaching people how to treat you. 2 Timothy chapter 2 says, again, I say, don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be, look what he says, kind to everyone, able to teach, and be patient with difficult people. The scripture tells us to be kind to difficult people people how do we do that how do we be empathetic and compassionate towards manipulators or gossips or even the wolves in our lives god by understanding the pain behind what they're producing that's how this this just be you can't label someone toxic and it give you a license to mistreat them and be rude to them and 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 cut people off and and be dismissive towards people no no we are called to be kind to everybody. When you encounter a toxic person, pray for them. God wants to use you. Bless them. It may not change them, but it'll change you. Here's what he says. Gently instruct. I'm going to use, I'm going to use my communication when I'm setting boundaries. I'm not going to be like, like rude about it, mean about it, blaming about it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to be very clear. I'm going to gently explain. And by the way, the boundaries are usually time and topic. Time or topic. You need to set boundaries in time and topic. How much time? What topics? Because, you know, this is how much time I give these people. This is how much time I give these people. That's okay. You need that. These are the topics I can talk about with these people. These topics I can't talk. I I ain't talking about with you. I can't talk politics with you. You need to set some boundaries. Hey, you know what? Whenever we get into politics and talking about politics and stuff like that, I get all frustrated and stuff. So do me a favor. When we're connecting, can we just not talk about politics? Can't talk about it with you. I can talk about it with these people. Because we, we can have a healthy dialogue. They don't even agree with me, but I can have a healthy, I can't have it with you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a boundary with that. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps based on my conversation and persuasiveness and proving them wrong and trying to, maybe I can change their life. Maybe, maybe based on like, like my correction in their life, maybe I can I can undo years of abuse and, and, and what they were child raising and their, and their, and their issues and their baggage and their, bra- and, their, and their strongholds. Maybe I can set them free to think like me. No, right? That's not the goal. The goal is to be gentle, to be kind. You be clear. But the goal is perhaps, perhaps God will change. I'm not going to change him. I can't change you. What I can do is be gentle and kind and loving and clear, but perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth and then they will come to their senses and escape the devil's trap. For they have been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. Okay, so what does what does a relationship detox look like? There's some people in our life that fit some of these descriptors and behaviors. What does it look like biblically like what does the word of god tell us how, how do i have a healthy relationship because one thing to just remove but i need healthy so what is i'm going to help you today this week this week there's four relationship decisions i want you to make four of them and this week i want you to focus on these four things for your relationship detox and i'm telling you some of you it's 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 the re- spirit soul body you're doing good but it's the relationships that are that are messing you up it's your connections four decisions here it is number one I'm asking you to nurture your most important relationships. 
There are relationships that are more important to you. There are relationships in my life that God has given me that are more important. My relationship with my wife, my relationship with God is more important. It's the most important relationship. My marriage, God has made me a parent. That's, a, that's one of my most important relationships. My kids, God has made me a pastor and a mentor. And there's important relationships that I need to nurture. Here's what you need to understand. All relationships take work. All of them. And all of your relationships, think about those important relationships. All of those important relationships, they are in the condition they're in based on how well or how well you have not nurtured them. Sometimes I talk to people and they're like, Pastor, my marriage, my marriage is messed up. It ain't the marriage's fault. Like it's the marriage. My marriage is, it's not the marriage's fault. Your marriage is in the condition it is based on how you treated and nurtured it. Okay? So it's, it takes work. It takes work. All relationships take work. You guys, Veronica and I are very intentional with our time, with our marriage. I'm intentional with my, my parents in relation, my relation with God. Listen to me. For your good, for your good, I prioritize my most important relationship. For, so I can be the best pastor I can be to you. I invest into my marriage. I invest into my kids. I invest into my, my inner circle relationships. I prioritize those relationships because if my marriage is off, I'm telling you, you ain't getting the best of me. All right? So it, it, it's to your benefit that I actually prioritize my most important. And it is the same thing for you. It is everyone around you is suffering because you are not nurturing the most important relationships in your life. They take work, and you're giving your best work to the stuff that are not most important. You're giving your, your, your best time, your best work, and your best effort to the things that aren't best in your life. And so we need to identify what are those important relationships and nurture those things. First Peter chapter 4 says, hey guys, the end of all things coming near. It's coming to it. So what do we do, man, as it's getting closer? Well, let's be clear-minded and self-controlled so we can pray. But above all, love each other deeply because love covers. Here's what your most important, those, those relationships need. They need love. Love covers. Our culture is like, oh, you don't agree with me? I hate you. You agree with me? I love you. Don't disagree because the moment you disagree, I hate you now. And what, you're, what these nurture, those most important relationships need, listen to me, they don't need full agreement. They need full love. Love covers. Love co- That's what those relationships need. They, need. they need some love covering the multitude of disagreements, the multitude of sins. That's what those most important relationships need. And you need to identify, what are those most important relationships? This week, this is our relationship detox. What are the most important relationships? Okay, number two. There are some broken relationships that need to be restored. We're going to restore some of the broken relationships in our life. Some of you right now, you're feeling the pain of a broken relationship. And and I just need you to know, the pain of it staying broken is more painful than the pain of fixing it. Are you hearing me, you guys? There's There's some relationships that, that the reason why they're still broken is because you're afraid of the, the restoration process. You're afraid of what that would look like. And I'm telling you, that process of restoring those broken relationships, it's, it's less painful than you letting it stay broken. And this is for you to go to God and say, God, where are the relationships that are broken right now that need to be restored? And I'm just going to urge you, do your part. Like even if they don't cooperate, you do your part. Okay, because oftentimes they're not going to cooperate. So, so you need to be able to, to have peace and hold peace even when other people don't. Romans chapter 12 tells it like this. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. That's not of God. Well, they treated me like that. They burn me, I'll burn them. Well, I just, I, you know, if that's how they're going to be, then that's how. That is not a kingdom principle. That is of this world and of the enemy. It's not. We do not repay evil for evil. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, they may have evil in their heart. They may have toxic. They may disagree. They may hate me. But in my heart, I got nothing but peace for you. I have, I'm trying have peace for everyone. Settle it in your heart. You know, there's a reason why Jesus included in the Lord's Prayer forgiveness. You know why? Because forgiveness is a daily choice. He daily wanted us. Daily. Hey, God, 
help, help me to forgive, forgive. I forgive. Today, I'm making the choice to forgive others the same way I'm forgiven. <laughs> it, God, forgive me to the same degree I forgive other people in my life. That's what that prayer is every day. Every day. We are, called, we are to make that our prayer. God, help me to, God, to the same degree, God, I forgive them as I've been forgiven. That's a daily choice that we need to make. Hey, what are the relationships that need to be restored that are broken? All right, this week, let's, let's focus. Let's detox, man. Let's get, because it's not just getting, here, number three is this. Number three is this. We need to sever some harmful relationships. There are some relationships that need to be cut off. There are some relationships, uh, some people around you, negative people, toxic people. Here's what I first want you. Stop blaming them. Don't blame them. Look at yourself because something inside of you is attracting and tolerating toxic people. We, we got to be careful because some of you are going to, some of you, you're going to, you're going to remove certain people from your life, but it's just, there are going to be people just like them that are going to backfill in the space because the problem really isn't them, it's you. There's something inside of you that keeps gravitating to wrong guys. There's something inside of you that keeps gravitating to the wrong friends. Your friends ain't the problem. There's something inside of you that is toxic, that is attracting. So, so that's why we got to backfill. It's not just severing. We got to backfill and make sure that God is working in our life, in our heart. Proverbs 27, 19 says, a mirror reflects a man's face. But what he really is like is shown by the kinds of friends he chooses. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So stop looking at them and look in the mirror. If you're around a whole bunch of negative people, if you're around a whole bunch of gossip people, if you're around all these negative people, I promise you, they are not the problem. And until you change, your circle's not going to change. Even if you cut them all off, who you are will attract the new toxic people into your life. Proverbs 13 and 20, he who walks with the wise grows wise. That's why I want you in a group. That's why some of you need to be in Celebrate Recovery. That's why some of you need to be hanging out with a men's group or a women's group. It, you'd be far better off hanging out with a companion of fools suffering harm. I'm telling you, you will suffer. You will get hurt. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14 says, don't be yoked together. Don't have common fellowship with unbelievers, people that are living not like you. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Now, he's not saying, you know, oh, you don't believe in Jesus? I can't hang out with you. That's not what he's saying here. What he's saying is there's just no commonality. What do you do with it? You get rid of it. You sever it. I'm not going to have that influence in my life. Some of you young people, you need to make some friend decisions. You need to stop letting waiting for your parents to dog them out of your life, you need to grow up and start making some friend decisions that are better. Proverbs 22 and, says, 22 and 10 says, Drive out the mocker and out goes strife. Quarrel and insults are somehow magically gone when they leave too. I'm telling you, like when, when, when Pastor Veronica and I set up some boundaries in our life, even years ago with our own family, we, we had to set up some boundaries in our life. It's amazing. There was a lot less fighting somehow around us. A lot less insulting and quarreling around us. Okay? You, it doesn't, look, you do what you gotta do to, to have a healthy home, have a healthy marriage, you know, have a healthy soul. I'm not telling you to cut people off, I'm telling you to set up some boundaries though. Gary Thomas he is another author, wrote a really amazing book called When to Walk Away. When to Walk Away. See, sometimes walking away has nothing to do with weakness and everything to do with strength. Sometimes we don't walk away like Jonathan didn't walk away because they're related. It's family. You don't walk away from family. So Gary Thomas did this study of the Gospels and all throughout the Gospels and studied every time Jesus walked away. And he was surprised that, that how many times Jesus actually literally walked away from toxic people that he did not allow toxic people to have a certain access into his life. That Jesus modeled something for us that it's okay to walk away sometimes. And, and, and some of you need to maybe prayerfully consider walking away from some toxic relationships. And then lastly, number four. Y'all getting something out of this, you guys? Are you all with me? Yeah. Number four. We got to initiate 
some meaningful relationships. Meaning, we, there are some relationships I have that I need to, I need to set boundaries. There's some, there's some relationships I have that I need to distance, that I need to remove. But there's also some relationships, listen, I don't have that I need. But if I'm going to truly detox, get healthy, relationship, spirit, soul, body, relationships, like my whole self, if I'm going to create in my whole self health, then I don't, I can't just remove the unhealthy. I need to get the, I need to initiate, get the right people in my life. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says, let us not give up. Coming together, linking up with the right people as some, they're in the habit of, of disconnecting, of getting around the wrong people, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day. And that day is capitalized because it's the return of Christ. He said it's coming. So, so let's, let's link up. Let's make sure we're around the right people. We're getting together with the right people more. There's, there's I believe, four relationships that you need to initiate if you really want to have a healthy these, all four of these are, are, are relationships you need. You need these. When we talk about the backfield, the vacuum, if you remove, you gotta, you gotta put the healthy things in. Through the scriptures we see four relationships every follower of Jesus needs. All of these. Some of you have some of them, some of you need some of them. You need to initiate some of these. The first relationship is a relationship with the church. Every follower of Jesus needs a relationship with God's church. And I'm not just referring to the global church that we all belong to because we are born again followers of Jesus who have been filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about that global church. I'm talking about a local family of believers, a local church. Every follower of Jesus needs a local family. That's biblical. And it's not practiced by a lot of professing Christians and you're unhealthy because of it. Your life is not better because you wander to hired hand to hired hand, shepherd to shepherd, and you wander. You lack accountability, and you lack com community, and you lack deep roots, and you're lacking true discipleship and true life on life. You're lacking it. Okay, you, every one of us need a relationship with a church. Sure, there's pastors over there and brothers over there. Sure, 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 we're all, but you need one to say, that's my pastor. And those are my brothers, but this is my brother I'm walking with. This is my herd. It's my herd. You need that. You need it if you're a disciple of Jesus. If you want to be healthy, you need it, okay? Number two, you also need a group. You need a group where, where you can be honest and real with people, where you can be yourself, where you can actually, like, talk about and process what God... So earlier in the service, we were praying, man, and I was like, you know, you're letting things go, and God was imparting into you. And even today, throughout this message, like, God is imparting things into you. If you get around some other people and you process that word and you say, man, this is what God said. This is what God said. What did God say to you? What did God say to you? And this is what God said. Oh my gosh. You know what we're doing here is we're just cultivating the soil. This is what we're doing. I'm cultivating. I'm cultivating. I'm cultivating. I'm talking about the word. I'm talking about that word. I'm cultivating it. Some of you know if you cultivate the word, you don't process it with, with, with your brothers and sisters. And so the word sits on the top of the soil of your heart. And Jesus told a parable of the seed that sits on top of the soil. And he says, when the seed sits there and doesn't penetrate, it, it, when it doesn't go deep enough, the enemy comes and takes that revelation. It bears meaning. It bears no fruit in your life. If you want to be fruitful, where, where these, the word of God, the revelation of God, the impartation you're receiving, it, 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 there's outcome and there's fruit. And you see it just affecting lives and mindsets and relationships. And just like, you got to process it with people. So you need a relationship with the church. You need a relationship with a group. Get into a group. Number three, you need a relationship with a team. God has created you to make a difference. He has given you gifts, abilities, and strengths to make a difference. Here's what, like, at Discovery, here's what we say a healthy disciple of Jesus looks like. It's someone who is loving God, loving each other, and changing the world. Okay, that if you are lacking in any one of those domains of a disciple, that's what they are. They are domains of, of a disciple of Jesus. Just like spirit, soul, and body in any area that is toxic will affect all the others. If any of those areas are not healthy, you love God, you're making a difference, but you got no community. You're not as healthy as you think you are. 
you love God, you got community, but you ain't got no team where you're serving, blessing others, where God is using you with the kingdom of God, with your other brothers and sisters to make an impact for his kingdom and glory. Not just your paycheck, but his kingdom and glory, his kingdom advancing. If you're not doing that, you're not as healthy as you think you are. You need a team. And we, we make it really easy here at Discovery to try to get you connected to the church, the team, your gifting. There is a class today at 3 p.m. We call it Discovery Track. It's just a track we, we, we designed to help you kind of become a healthy disciple of Jesus. And if you've never been to that, I teach track one. I go over our vision and our values as a church, our beliefs, so that you can like prayerfully, is this, could this be the church that, is this, I'm going to link up with this church? And we even help you get connected to a team in track two. Today's track one at three. Some of you, if you are going to go on this detox with me this week, you, you should come. If you've never been, you should come. If you're serious about detoxing and getting your life and relationships right. The, the last thing is the most important thing, though, the, the relationship that we need to initiate. Or maybe some of you need to reinitiate, and that's your relationship with God. I put it last because I wanted to end with this, but it really is first. Some of you today, in order to get healthy in your relationships, the relationship you need to initiate, like, listen to me. Don't check out on me. Listen, before you go, make your relationship decisions that God has already shown you today, and he's going to show you some more as you process this word. Before you go make that decision, the most important decision that you need to initiate or reinitiate is your relationship with God. You need to get healthy first. You need to get your spirit healthy. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the Give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.